to what? Truth. There has to be an absolute standard of what? Truth. And God is going to judge based on that standard. This is why in his natural state man is in trouble. Because Romans 3.23, we've fallen short of what? The glory of God. We don't need to go to Hebrews 9.27. We've already looked at it. Whoops. Reason number two. God's love demands eternal punishment. The Bible asserts that God is love. Correct? But love cannot act coercively. Only persuasively. A God of love cannot force people to love Him. I do want to look at this one. 2 Corinthians 9. If God came and forced us to love Him, would that be love? No. What do you call forced love, folks? I'll say it. You call it rape. God is, going to not, God is not going to rape the volition of His free creatures to force them to love Him. So, the, so a God of love demands that the choice for salvation be that of the individual. 2 Corinthians 9, look at verse 7. Is this what I wanted here? Every man according as he hath purposed in his heart. This is not the verse I wanted. Anyway, you get the point. Forced love is not love. We'll read it. Maybe it is. Every man according as he hath purposed in his heart, so let him what? Not grudgingly, or of what? Necessity. For God loveth what kind of giver? God doesn't want you to drag, He doesn't want to drag you kicking and screaming to the can in the back to drop your money in. If that's your attitude, He says what? I don't want it. He wants it to be given how? Freely and in love. He wants it to be motivated by love. He wants it to be constrained by love. Forced love is not love, it's rape. A, a, a loving being always gives space to others, and he does not force himself upon them against their will. Hence, those who do not choose to love God must be allowed not to love Him. They must be. They must be allowed to be like the guys in Romans chapter 1 who know the glory of God and say, nah, forget that, we want to do our own thing. Those who do not wish to be with Him must be allowed to be separated from Him. Eternal punishment allows eternal separation. Point number four, human dignity demands it. This is a piggyback on what I just said. Since God cannot force people into heaven against their free will, human free choice demands a hell. C.S. Lewis in the Screwtape Letter said, there are only two kinds of people in the end. Those who say to God, Thy will be done. And those to whom God says in the end, Thy will be what? Listen, folks, God will give you what you want. He'll give you what you want. Did the Gentiles want to retain God in their knowledge? Romans chapter 1? No. So what did he do? He gave them up, he gave them up, he gave them over to a reprobate mind. What do most people think about God? Well, you know, if I do enough good, good works here, then God will what? How's God going to judge the lost in the end? We'll see this next Sunday. He's going to judge them exactly the way they say they want to be judged. Go read about the great white throne. It says that the judge shall be that they shall be judged according to things which are written in the books according to their what works. He'll give you what you want. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall what bow. Philippians chapter two. That doesn't mean everybody's going to get saved, folks. But at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow one day. Whether you bow now of your own free will and acknowledge who Christ is and what He did for you, or whether you are forced to bow in recognition and pay homage to Him as you're given your eternal sentence, either way, you're going to what? You're going to bow. Lastly, the cross of Christ demands it. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. (coughs) 
Verse 18. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved it is what? The power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolishness the wisdom of this world? Look at verse 21. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of what? Preaching to save them that what? There is no salvation outside of the cross work of Christ. Period. Bottom line. Without the cross, there is no salvation. And only through the cross can we be delivered from our sins. First Corinthians, don't turn there, but in chapter 15, verse 3, he says, For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ, what? Died for our sins sins. Jesus suffered great agony and separation from God the Father upon the cross. He says as He hangs on the cross, My God, my God, why hath you what? Forsaken me. Why the cross if, if all this suffering, I'm sorry, why the cross and all the suffering unless hell and the lake of fire are real? And the last point I want to make to you about this before I close is this. Christ's death on the cross is robbed of its eternal significance unless there is eternal separation from God from which people need to be delivered. Maybe you are still having questions or you're still uneasy. I want, in closing, I want you to turn to Genesis 18. I want to leave you with this thought. I want to leave you with this thought. God. How many of you believe God loves you? How many of you believe He sent His Son to die for you? How many of you believe that God, in His justice and absolute rightness, is never going to do anything that is unfair? So even if there are some questions in this greater discussion about eternal punishment that we can't answer, that we're unable to wrap our mind around, we can rest assured that God is not going to do anything that is not fair. People ask about what about the law, what about people in the jungle, and people here that have never heard the gospel, and, and this and that. And I, I have some thoughts on that. I don't have time to get into that stuff with you, but the bottom line on this the bottom line on that is this. God is not going to treat those people unfairly based on the light and the information that they had. Genesis chapter 18, look at verse 25. I want to leave you with this thought. Next week we're going to identify what is the second death. Notice this, verse 25, Genesis 18, 25. That be far from thee, to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. And the righteous shall be as the wicked. Notice, that be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do what? Do right. God is never going to do anything that violates His fairness, that violates His justice, that violates who He is. You need to understand that. And you need to rejoice in the salvation that you have. Underneath the blood. You've been watching Just Grace It, a production of Grace Life Bible Church. Salvation is free. Put your faith in the shed blood of Christ as the only payment for your sins. If you are interested in joining a community of believers who rejoice in who God has made them in Jesus Christ, call or write to us or visit us online at justgraceit.com.